Hi guys, Sunny Scared and welcome to another Falcon BMS video. Today's video is going to be really about my setup. Uh, I get questioned quite a lot as to how I've got my Falcon BMS set up, what configuration files I have selected and what's my graphics card set up. That's a big one. And uh, just generally I get asked what mods I use. I use very few mods, but I'll go into that in further detail. And uh, just how maybe this is not a this is not a video to say this is how you have to have it done. That's for sure. This is a video of just how I have it done. And hopefully uh, with that information out there, you can either make your Falcon BMS uh, run a little bit smoother or you could gain some knowledge which you didn't have before, which makes things a bit better for you or you can tailor it towards your system. Um, so, like I said, this isn't, this is how you have to have it. This is just how I have it and hopefully it will help you. Okay, let's just crack on with it. Uh, open up. Falcon BMS. That's actually going to be pretty small for you guys. Let's see if I can make that a bit bigger. Yeah, let's make that a lot bigger. There we go. Maybe that's just a bit too big. I don't want it to be blurred everywhere. Let's just... All right, let's let's go with that. Let's go with that for the time being. Uh, click on the configuration there. And I'll run through this bit by bit with you. OK, avionics. Let's start off with cursor speed. I've run mine just at 75 percent, just a little bit off uh, the 100 percent, which is the default. That's because I like the fine grain movement with 75 percent. I use my mouse hat, which is on the back of my throttle on the and the Thrustmaster Warthog um, and that really feels good to me. I get some really fine grain control with that as well uh, without it being too slow and uh, yeah having it too slow in the cockpit is actually even worse than having it too fast sometimes. Okay uh, moving down to high contrast MFDs I don't have that selected obviously. Uh, radar scale, I keep things as standard, 75% default, and I keep the smaller HSD symbols ticked as well. Okay, campaigns, AWACS required, yes. No DTC for ramp start. I like to load up my DTC tapes uh, when I get in the pit. Offensive air to ground missions ticked as well. General, slightly larger tab this one. We'll go through it bit by bit. Okay, the briefings and debriefings. Uh, oh, I don't know why that's not ticked. Briefing output to file, append new briefings, HTML briefings, debriefing output to file, all selected. Displacement camera, I've got that ticked. That's uh, when you're outside your aircraft, you have um, a nice view of it. It actually sort of moves the camera up and down. Just gives it a bit more of a realistic feel. It's absolutely not essential, but uh, it looks nice. So I leave that ticked. Some people don't like it, so they untick it. Enabled anchored mouse cursor. Personally, I can't bear it, but uh, I can understand if you're a newbie why you'd want to use it. Not all the switches in the F-16 cockpit are clickable, or some of the other pits aren't clickable, but this certainly helps uh, snap to a button if you're sort of struggling in the mouse to try and find uh, the switches and all that as you're flying. I can understand why a newbie would want to sort of help snap to it. Even an experienced flyer may like it, may just got used to it, and that's what he likes. For me, I, I personally can't bear it. I find when I'm under stress in a cockpit and a lot of things are happening, task saturation sets in, I want to be able to flick those switches very, very quickly. And I find sometimes uh, when you're moving your mouse and you've got head tracking and it all just snaps to uh, the wrong switch that you want to flick and you end up any more time looking down trying to get your mouse cursor in the right place so i leave that unticked that's personal preference uh, you just got to do what feels right for you uh, field of view uh, I've, <laughs> kind of irrelevant for me i use track ir so my field of view permanently changes because you can lean forward lean back and that's your field of view instantly changing i leave it at 70 degrees uh, you can the default 60 i uh, know lots of people that run at 80 it's uh, just bear in mind you can flick it on your mouse wheel. You can just scroll in, scroll out, and uh, you're changing your field of view continuously by doing that anyway. Full screen night vision goggles, no. Uh, PNG screenshots, yes, I like PNG screenshots. Padlock box size, leave it the standard, 02 default. 
uh, play intro movie and start up totally up to you that's not selective for me use hd altimeter uh, i use that purely because of fact that's what uh, most people are using in multiplayer when i fly so it's nice to tally up together with uh, the same readings and uh, moving into hardware let me close the general tab now hardware dogfight missile override self cancel that's uh that's a no for me because i've got that map to my um my hotas i've actually got my override my mrm cancel on there enable virtual rudder now i've got my own rubber rudder pedals um external displays i don't extract any displays to any other windows or to any other devices high resolution textures big tick from me idle cutoff i could map that to my warthog i never ever do so i just leave it unticked low resolution for clouds no thank you reduced particle system no thank you although when i say this if you're struggling with frame rates, these these are big ones to tick. Untick, uh, reduced particle and low resolution for uh, clouds and high resolution textures. All of those are big, big, big uh, things to help you with frame rates. So do look at those if you're struggling. Next is to shaders, glass environment mappings ticked. Lighting effects per, per pixel lighting I've got ticked. Um, if once again you're struggling with frame rates per vertex lighting is a good one to tick but there is a significant reduction in quality by doing that okay post processing of processing effects hdr lighting i've got on jet heat exhaust ticked motion blur not ticked i don't find it really adds to the immersion very much uh, you may think differently so try both and see what you think Okay, um, coming down to rain effects, fire rain, yes, and raindrops, yes, and rain rings, yes. And then shadow mapping, don't forget that this extends as well. Cockpit shadows, focus shadows, ticked. I've got a GTX 1070, I could run shadows on smoke. Uh, I just don't really bother, it's just not that essential for me. Uh, you don't really notice it too much, I find. Uh, water norm normal mapping, yes. Water environment mapping, yes. Cloud reflections, don't bother with that either. And focus object reflections, I do bother with that. Uh, like I say, I could still run that with the 1070, no problems whatsoever. Track IR settings, leave all those blank for me. Uh, triple buffering, I don't know why I've got that ticked. That doesn't need to be ticked because that's only useful if you use vertical sync, V-sync. And I don't because I run a G-Sync monitor, so I don't have V-Sync enabled. Right, modifications. Flyer 16s only and M2K dedicated sounds. Unticked and unticked. You want to have that one ticked if you're flying the Mirage. Uh, that would be very useful to you, the M2K dedicated sounds. Multiplayer. Uh, freeze, freeze allowed. No. MVG allowed. Uh, yes. MVG and full screen allowed. I'll turn that off. There's a few things here which are sort of changing on the fly here. I didn't realize I had them ticked. Same act data files required. Okay, normally you'd have this ticked in my dogfighting championships that I do. Uh, that's actually a, a, a prerequisite is that that is ticked. Uh, but when you're flying the Balkans multiplayer, it does say quite clear in the instructions because they've got different tile sets. They've got a high res, a low res. They've got high res models, diff different low res models. If you had that ticked, uh, you wouldn't be able to play multiplayer books uh, you'd have different act data files so uh, i leave that unticked so i can fly multiplayer in the balkans same tile set required yes smoke allowed yes okay startup restricted uh, i always leave it ramp taxi and take off you never know if you're short on time things happen and uh, sometimes you run out of time for a ramp start and uh, maybe you're flying with someone who's not as experienced and doesn't want to do a ramp start so you can start with taxi and takeoff. So just leave it on all three, what I do. Okay, that's kind of the uh, config, the launcher config gone through and dealt with. Uh, now we'll actually go, oh, hang on, hang on, apply changes, yes, okay. Next, uh, the, oh, that's the other thing I want to make sure that you know, I'm running in 64-bit mode. 
and uh, I'll go into this later with this little command line minus window. This is what makes it run in window mode. I run it always in the window mode. There's reasons for that, which I'll discuss in a bit. Okay, guys, let's move on and actually launch up Falcon BMS. Wait for this to load up. Okay, move into setup. And we'll start in the simulation page. This is how I have a setup. Uh, obviously, right down here, this is all your uh, personal preference and how experienced you are. And uh, I mean, I recommend right from the start, even if you're a noob, to set all this to maximum. It's the best way you're going to learn. You're going to learn the fastest and you're not going to have any uh, differing flight models to everyone else. I think this is just the best way to do it. Um, just set everything to ACE, realism rating 100%, flight model accurate, weapon effects accurate, autopilot 3 axis, air refueling realistic, and pad locking realistic. Um, over on the right hand side, you've got vulnerability off, unlimited fuel off, unlimited chaff and flare off, no collisions off, no blackout off, labels off, <laughs> smart scaling. I leave that on uh, when you're dogfighting. That's super handy. It just gives you a, a slightly, when the aircraft is uh, further away from you, it just um, makes it a bit more realistic as to how you'd see it. Your, your eyes could see a lot further in a real cockpit than uh, than this game gives credit for or graphics cards give credit for. And uh, just makes things a bit clearer. You can uh, definitely assess the energy state of the bandit in a dogfight uh, with that you know, at a, at a greater distance, and it makes it a lot better. So, smart scaling on, radio calls using bullseye on, display the info bar, totally up to you. Uh, personally, I think it ruins the videos, it uh, kills the immersion for me, I don't like it. It's just a display bar at the bottom, giving you all your airspeed and everything else. So, uh, that's off for me. Display uh, radio subtitles, I leave that on. Sometimes uh, you get in a real comms heavy situation in multiplayer and AWACs are also talking and it's nice just to have a little thing to read up in the top left of the screen just to confirm uh, what you think you heard uh, because it does get busy up there in the cockpit sometimes. User messages that's a definite to keep on as well certainly multiplayer if you're doing um, a ramp start or something and uh, one of your teammates doesn't know uh, what UHF frequency needs to be on for tower and you can't get hold of them on Victor either then you can quite easily just press shift T and that will bring up a little text bar and you can actually just type in and chat to them. and it appears as a message across everyone's jet they all get to see it so uh, I leave that on that's super handy Acme file size 350 megabytes what I got if you're just dog fighting and recording dog fights you can get away with 200 meg no problems um, but for campaign recording or anything like that do you start gathering a lot of data so 350 I would say would be a minimum for that um, so that's what I've got my set as okay moving on to sound I actually have my own uh, sounds as one of the mods that I've done is that I've managed to get a hold of really good onboard F-16 uh, cockpit sounds and I've managed to uh, basically put them into, I have went into uh, Audacity and sort of uh, filtered them into the sounds that we've already got with Falcon BMS. So I've got my own unique sound files. So this is why my sound settings are pretty much not like anything else anyone else recommends. This is just how, so it sounds uh, as best as it can for me. And also bear in mind when you're in the cockpit in a simulator, you don't really have all the environment uh, keys that you'd have in real life. So you have to sort of try and up the sound and make things a bit more realistic in the cockpit so you can get that extra dimension of uh, sensory awareness that you don't normally have. So here we go, engine internals up to four for me, engine externals that is down to four, and sidewinder, uh, that uh, growl gets a bit, bit much at times, so just taking the edge off it there and dropping it down to five. 
IWR, just leave it alone exactly where it needs to be. Cockpit, I leave that alone as well. Com1, Com2, I just take the edge off those. Not really important. You can turn those up and down in cockpit anyway. Intercom, once again, up and down in the cockpit as well. But I leave that on full. And sound effects, I have uh, bumped up to nine. External sound in the cockpit, I've got that as five, just one above without earplugs. And music often interface sounds up to three. This external sound in the cockpit, the actual reality of it is when you're flying an F-16 with uh, the helmet on, your earpiece on and everything else would be with earplugs all the way down. But like I said, to get that extra uh, environmental um, feedback that you wouldn't normally get I pump that up just to five uh, certainly lets me know when uh, flak is popping closer to the aircraft and stuff in real life you'd actually feel it through the aircraft uh, the, the the blast so um, yeah that's what I'm doing by that okay the next major tab we're going to discuss is graphics now I will actually show you my NVIDIA card set up, like I said, but let's start with here. Uh, okay, obviously GTX 1070 is what I've got. Resolution I'm running is 2560 by 1440 at 144 hertz. Okay, uh, just a quick word about my YouTube videos and all that. I actually uh, convert that down to 1080p. Uh, purely because of the fact of data size and convenience. So uh, what you're seeing on my videos is 1080p, but when in game, when I'm playing, I'm actually looking at it at uh, 1440p. Multi-sampling, switch that off and the quality levels directly related to the multi-sampling. So leave that at level zero. Uh, vertical sync, once again, I have that off. If you've got a G-Sync monitor, then obviously you want G-Sync to run. Um, but if you don't have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor, then I strongly recommend that maybe you leave vertical sync on. It certainly helps with smoothing and those erratic frame rates. Okay. Uh, canopy cues, I have them of both. Certainly, uh, I have the lift line. The lift vector, I use all the time. Certainly, dogfighting, lining up, flying to someone six, I'm using that a lot. Object density, six, that's maxed out. Object detail, seven, maxed out. HDR bloom, I just take the edge off it. Certainly, with uh, the knee boards that I have, obviously, a white page. As sun comes in through the cockpit, you look down. You want to read something off your knee boards. And it's just one HDR bloom of golden glow. You can't read a thing. So just take the edge off that. HDR blur, you can do whatever you want with that. That setting does not do a damn thing. Uh, tree density and grass density. If you're struggling with frame rates, then knock it down uh, all the way to the bottom. Um, I leave it as pretty much standard. I have run it all the way up to the top. It doesn't make much difference with me with a 1070, but uh, just for conformity, I just leave it down there and it's absolutely fine. Okay, moving to... Oh, something else I just want to say is season. So, <laughs> I've had questions before um, where I've done uh, a Balkans video or a career video and it's been like completely covered in snow it's uh, the winter tiles. You can choose your seasons down here. Now, people actually sit there and say, oh, my God, do you have a new you know, tile set for that? Did you install a mod? How do you get snow? No, it's just literally select your seasons. You've got summer, fall, winter and spring. And uh, we'll, I've got it on fall at the moment because, funnily enough, it is fall when it moves into winter. I'll put it into winter and so on. I will actually run my campaigns as I run the seasons. Um, and uh, that's how you do it. That's from here. Okay, now let's go to the advanced tab. Uh, anisotropic filtering is off. Mip mapping on. Linear mip map filtering on. Texel bias fix on. And texture TV and IR is on. Okay, so with that, I just quickly want to say one of the best resources for setting up your graphics card is given to you. The manual is amazing. Not enough people spend time on the manual. And the manual really does have everything 
in it. It's fantastically well written. It covers everything. So let's just quickly, I'm just going to quickly uh, pop down to, I think it's 4.3 user interfaces. Everything that I'm discussing, it basically tells you with exactly all the information that we've been going through in more detail. So do, do read it and do have a look at it. But with regard to graphics, those are scaling you see that I was talking about. Okay, uh, the sound page, let's get down. Here we go, graphics 4.3.4, which starts on page 34 of the BMS manuals. Okay, for BMS manuals, this is where you want to be. You come into your Falcon BMS folder, you go to docs, and you go to Falcon BMS manuals that are in there. Those four documents, every single one worth a read. I can pop one of these open at any time and read something and go, oh God, yeah, or oh, I didn't even know that. So um, regardless of how experienced you are, there's a bank of information there, which I guarantee there'll be something in there that you don't know. Okay. Um, if you go to the docs folder, it actually tells you exactly that, you know, multi-sampling, you should probably turn that off if you want to trade and get your graphics card to work. And it even says, you know, modern graphics cards should be better off switching it off, overriding anti-aliasing in AMD Catalyst Control Center or the NVIDIA Control Panel. Anti-aliasing may significantly affect your frame rate. They do experiment with the settings to find what works for you. Blah, 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 blah. It's all in there. Okay, and it goes through everything and it tells you what the differences are with object density, object details, the HDR bloom, uh, the blur, and everything else, like I said, the blur is ineffective. And you can see the differences between uh, maximum density for trees and the standard. So, okay, uh, all in there, tons of information on how to set up BMS given to you and it tells you all the little secrets that you need to know as well okay all right let's actually close this uh, controllers I'm not going to go into I've done a video on that uh, my uh, warthog setup so we're not going to touch on that let me just close all this and what I want to actually show you now is my Nvidia graphics card settings is this all getting too big? Um, I might just reduce it a little. Okay. Okay, um, this is your NVIDIA control panel. Uh, what you want to do is come down to manage 3d settings and you'll see there's actually two tabs here you want to come off the global settings and go into your program settings and uh, when this loads up you're going to see it's probably falcon bms is the first one that comes up yes it is okay when you select a program to customize make sure you don't put the launcher in here do the falcon bms launcher see there's the launcher you don't want that selected. You actually want to dig out the actual executable. So go into a Falcon BMS folder, the bin x64 Falcon BMS exe. That's the one that you want because that's what it's going to run off. Okay. Now in here, let's go through this bit by bit. Ambient occlusion is not supported for this application. Anisotropic filtering 16 times. That's the one that we got turned off in the in the settings. So you want that 16 times. FXAA, I have that off. Uh, gamma correction, global setting on. Anti-aliasing mode, override, any application setting, and I've got it on eight. Now the transparency, anti-aliasing transparency, I have that off. If you notice that you're in the cockpit and you've got a bit of a glow around the edges, that's what that is. Uh, the transparency basically just sets this little glow of light round edges. It just takes off the sharp corners of things, but uh, it's very distracting if you've got this sort of um, ghosty glow as you're sort of moving your head around in the cockpit with head tracking, then that'll be a culprit. CUDA GPUs, yeah, use them all, please. Maximum pre-render frames, use the 3D application setting. 
Okay, here's where things are gonna get a bit funky. If you've got a G-Sync monitor like I have, then these options are gonna be there. If you don't, you probably won't even have them. Monitor technology, G-Sync, multi-frame sampled AA, MFAA off. Open GL rendering GPU, use global settings or to select. Power management mode, this is a massive one. Put prefer maximum performance. Your options are optimal power. It quite often is set to adaptive so make sure it's on prefer maximum performance preferred refresh rate uh, highest available and your shader cache use global uh, use the global setting texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization that needs to be on and you've got your texture filtering negative lot bias and to clamp texture filtering quality is on quality Texture filtering, trilinear optimization. God, these are a mouthful. On. And threaded optimization. That's another one definitely on. Triple buffering. Like I said before, if you're running uh, vertical sync, then that's pretty much essential to have on. But if you're not running V-Sync because you've got a G-Sync or a free sync monitor and you don't want your... Uh, uh, vertical sync to be capping that frame rate but your monitor can do the job then you want that off so vertical sync off as well for me yeah so just to recap there yeah if you've basically not got a g-sync monitor or a free sync monitor and you run v-sync i recommend you run v-sync then then have the triple buffering on and the vertical sync on Okay, and uh, down here, virtual reality pre-rendered frames. Obviously, VR not supported yet. So uh, that's use global setting one. Just leave it alone. Okay, guys, the next thing I want to tell you is basically, uh, as I said before, I've got uh, Falcon BMS in windowed mode. And uh, basically, that allows me to click in and out of the game when it's in 2D. So I can actually use things like the Weapon Delivery Planner alongside Falcon BMS. And I can also sort my recordings out for uh, OBS and everything else. So super handy. Um, and uh, obviously, with it in full screen, you're pretty much having to alt tab out. And it's known to cause quite a few problems. Sometimes it works. Sometimes you do get the occasional hang and crash. And if you're in a multiplayer flight and you're setting up and you've gone through a long flight briefing and then you alt tab out and alt tab back in and it crashes, it's a bit of an inconvenience for everyone. So that's the main reasons why I use window mode. Now, usually in window mode, when you first set it up, you're always in the sort of top left of the screen here. A lot of people get very annoyed with that. Now, let me show you how you can actually go in and change that. So what you're looking to do is come into your Falcon location where you actually installed Falcon BMS. Go into users and go to uh, config. And in here, you are looking for Falcon BMS cfg file the config file and you want to open that up and this is what it looks like okay just to give you a heads up uh this here at the beginning is pretty much everything you get when you click that it's all just uh flags the majority of it some of them are decimals but the majority are flags like binary zeros and ones um, but the first part of it is all of what you get there in the configuration setup then come down here, you've got the multiplayer section. See, it's all very well labeled, documented. Uh, documented. And uh, there's a couple of things in here you need to change, or I could recommend that you change. First one I shall tell you is, uh, let's go down to getting the window into the center of screen. So we're staying on topic. Oh, first of all, if you don't know how to get it into window mode, it's literally as simple as you take your game icon. Let me get the, let me get that up. You take your uh, icon that you actually launch a game with. Just go into properties. Oh, silly me. There we go. Properties and uh, just in here at the very end of the target, just off the exe, you just type in minus window. That's all you have to do. Like I say, it will then appear top left of your screen the whole time. And when you go into planning and everything else, everything's in the top left. Let me just tell you exactly. If you come into this Falcon BMS CFG file, exactly where I show you that 
showed you where to find it and come down to where is that where is it? there we go set gb center ui to one okay and this will chuck it right in the center of your screen for you like i have it so when you launch bms it's going to load up and it's going to be all in the middle instead of all this top left of the screen i like it other things that you can do obviously in this I can actually demonstrate now that I can click in and I can do other things at the same time. Super handy uh, is where is it? Save pretty screenshots. Where is it? There you go. Set GB pretty screenshots to one. What this does is this removes all the writing off your screenshots. So you get nice clean screenshots without any other writing on there. And uh, that's a really handy one to know. Another one that I've got in there, you can see there's tons of settings. Um, that you can play around with it's all well well labeled as to what each and every single one does um, at the bottom this one is in the manual now the manual gives you some extra options which aren't in this list and uh, one of them was uh, to set the ramp minutes and I've set mine down to 14 rather than the standard 20 purely because of the fact a it doesn't take me long to fire up a jet B I don't need the weight and uh, it, it just makes sense just for me to drop that time. I do believe a multiplayer flight, so if you drop it anything below 13 or 12 minutes, the jet starts its own AI startup process. So you may jump into the jet and it may start setting stuff up already, like your canopy may be closed or certain elements may be starting already for you, uh, which you don't want. 14 minutes, 15 minutes, that's a good safe bet. Um, and uh, that's what you need to put in there that's in the manual and it's just uh, set g underscore n ramp minutes and set it to the minutes that you want 40. okay um what else did i want to discuss ah ivc okay i'll discuss ivc next Okay, so for IVC, uh, let's just open this up. Come into your Falcon BMS folder as normal. Uh, you want to be going into the bin directory. And uh, X64 is where your Falcon launcher is. Uh, you don't want to be in there. It's actually IVC runs x86. So in there, you're going to see a folder called IVC. Just double click that. And you are going to have in here IVC client configuration setting right there. And that is something I'm going to open up now. Okay, in here, once again, this is all in the Falcon BMS documents, um, the manual. So just have a look at it, and it will tell you what each and every single one of these does. It's quite near the end of the manual, if I remember rightly. But for me, I've literally, uh, the only thing I've changed are the, the fuzz, the hum levels, the hiss levels, the tone volume. Um, I've also put up my UHF volume and my VHF volume to plus five so I can overhear what's going on. Um, when I first had it without, I think that was at plus one or something, I could hardly hear some people on, uh, on Uniform or Victor and it was, it was driving me nuts. Okay, so if you're looking for a way to sort of pump up your IVC volume, this is where you want to do it. Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, that's that's the IVC config file. And the next topic that we're going to discuss, guys, is uh, mods. What mods am I using? I'm always getting asked, what mods do you use? Is that a mod? You know, how do you get this? Is this a mod? Um, I don't use mods. I've got uh, a cloud mod installed. That's it. Uh, a friend chaos he gave me those no idea where he got them from and uh, just installed them I think it's down in terrain data career weather there you go it's just different cloud tiles that's all um, everyone's like yeah but you're using um, the pilot body pilot legs and knee boards that's all included in the Balkan theater guys uh, it's you just need to read the instructions. It's not enabled by default. If you go to yeah, go to your Falcon BMS folder, go to data, add on Balkans. 
double click on docs and uh yep yeah, it's in the readme file there we go um already got it up for you yeah in the readme file for the docs even tells you how to complete the campaigns how many days it takes to complete the campaigns and everything else i mean all the information's there really good stuff uh, as always, Falcon BMS and any of this uh, add-on theatres, they're all extremely well documented. Documented, sorry. Making up words there. Okay, there you go. Pilot mod right there. Tells you exactly how to do it. Just follow the instructions. Literally, you just go into uh, the add-on Balkans art, cockpit art, and you're selecting the plane that you fly let me just go through the process of it so you know how to enable it it's super easy it's super easy uh just go add on balkans we're in the add on balkans folder let's go right back so you get add on balkans go to the art go to the cockpit art and uh scroll down you're going to start seeing all your block models for the f-16 i fly a block 40 not the iaf not the eaf the cm what's that there we go the cm it says open up the 3D cockpit in a reader or you know your favorite text editor. There we go. You open it up. In here, okay, there's a couple of things that you can do. I'll run through them actually as to what I have done because I have changed. Some people will notice that I got asked actually the, the last video I did how do I change my DED color from the green? Well, I do it in here. This is where you go. Um yeah, my floodlight, you know, when I turn my cockpit lights on, not the actual uh, cockpit panel lighting, but the actual in surround lighting, I change the color of that to a, a more orange. Um, that's done there. It tells you exactly flight, uh, floodlight color mod. You just change that, the effects there. Green is 0 0.4, 1.0 and 0 0.4. And I've changed that to a slightly orangey yellow which is 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and 0 0.1. Here you go for a cockpit model, all highlighted and selected already for you. The, the standard it comes with is 2783, and to get the legs and the body, you literally just come down, you find the, what model you're flying. Uh, that's 40, we're on a CM block 40 f16 cm40 so i know it needs to be 2797 and there you go i've changed it from 2783 i've just commented that out so i remember to reset it if i want to and i just changed it to 2797 and hey presto you now have cockpit legs keyboards and body now there is an option here if you just want the legs only I like the body. I like the, the, the immersion it gives. It really shows you how tight that F-16 cockpit uh, is if you've ever sat in one. They're actually one of the roomiest cockpits, but uh, there's still a very claustrophobic feeling and uh, it really adds to the immersion I find having the body in there as well as the legs. It feels a bit more realistic. If you don't have uh, a head tracker, it's almost impossible to use, but you do need to look around your knee boards, your legs and your shoulders to actually click some of the buttons but if you do have a head tracker with the seven degrees of freedom then absolutely uh, chuck it in and it really adds to the immersion but if you want the pilot legs only once again you just come down here you find the cm block 40 and there you go 4477 and you just change that cockpit to cockpit model to there that's what i put in okay that is it. That's as simple as it is. Um, and it goes through some of the issues uh, that Balkans has, but don't worry about it. Uh, there's been tons of updates as well, so a lot of the issues have been fixed. It's a very, very uh, good, well-written campaign. And it's pretty much all I fly. I fly Korea and I fly Balkans. Um, everything else is uh, just for a bit of fun. They're the two ones for me which are super serious. Uh, I am uh, getting more and more into the Nordic campaign, uh, although that's very much in a teething process at the moment and the guys are working on it. And updates are coming slowly. So 
These are the ones that I have and I fly regularly. Balkans and Korea. Obviously having cockpit model um, legs, uh, cockpit legs and body and knee pads in Korea is totally different. It's not included with, uh, with the Korea map. And actually putting those in isn't as simple as just changing a config file uh, because the Balkans has it included. You'd actually have to be going into things and changing your models and LOD settings and everything else. So uh, I, I don't know enough about it and I haven't touched it. And that's why if you see me flying in Korea, it's just a standard cockpit. I would love to have it in uh, one day. Maybe I'll sit down and take the time to do it. But uh, as it stands, I just fly standard in Korea. But with BM, uh, with Balkans, I have it on because it's so damn easy. So kudos to the guys for doing that. Once again, referring to documentation, it's all in there. It's always worth a read. I get asked a lot of questions um, when all the information is actually all there at your fingertips. Okay, uh, what else in there? You can change all sorts in here. Um, just be careful if you're mucking about with this. Okay, um, you don't want to upset too much of the apple cart. They're the two that I changed, obviously, the, the lighting and the cockpit model legs. Other than that, no mods. I don't really use them. Uh, I think this concludes the video, really. This is kind of all I wanted to say is this is how I've got my setup. That is all there is to set up in Falcon BMS, unless you want to start adding other stuff and adding mods, then obviously that's down to the, the modder and the documentation that they give out with that. So please read it. I'm fairly sure the majority of mods out there will come with uh, a comprehensive documentation, which will be worth reading. And before I forget, just before this uh, video ends, as I said before, the DED color, you can also change that. It's just there if you go uh, where I said the floodlight uh, color was just uh, at the bottom there, you'll cut to DED color, and I've changed mine FF00FFFF, and the standard one that it comes with, the green, is FF00FF9C. Okay, so there you go. That's all you need to do. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you're going to walk away with something that uh, you didn't know before and if you did know it all before well sorry i wasted your time otherwise hope you guys are well and i shall catch you in the next one cheers guys bye bye